So I want to start out by saying thank you to everyone that came out here today and for those tuning into the live stream. As you may already be well aware, we are Team Colombia. We call ourselves Los Cafeteros. And for the non-Spanish speakers, that means coffee growers. And coincidentally, we found ourselves in Colombia at a coffee plantation actually picking coffee beans. <laughs> so moving on, I want to take this opportunity to introduce our team. I'm Drew Daffron. I was a project manager. I was in charge of communicating with the client, making sure everybody stayed on task and that everything got done. Sophie Natan was our web developer. She designed a clean and cohesive web experience on a user-friendly platform that would be easy for the client to maintain. Jessica Parker was our UX UI designer who worked closely with all team members in order to create a valuable interactive experience on all fronts. Cookies Robledo was our video lead. She was the onset director and video editor who worked tirelessly to create the videos that you'll see soon. Aaron Scott was our photography lead. He was in charge of taking photos on the ground in Columbia and editing them when we returned. Juliana Walker was our content strategist. She worked closely with all team members and essentially was in charge of composing all the content for the website in order to best tell our organization's story. Taekwon Williams was our graphic designer. He was in charge of rebranding the organization with a new logo, new color scheme, as well as the video graphics and animations. We would also like to thank our faculty and staff advisor, Philip Motley and Brian Baker, for helping us throughout our trip. Thanks, guys. So moving on. So I would have to say that our mantra for our trip was C. When it came to hard work, C. When it came to learning, C. When it came to perseverance, C. And most importantly, when it came to teamwork, when help was needed, no was never an option for any of us. Our organization shared our enthusiasm for teamwork and learning. Projectus Tech Novo strives to provide independence through opportunity for people in vulnerable positions due to war, social situation, or mental or physical disability through the creation and sales of a variety of homemade crafts. And our goal for the website and content was to tell the stories of the organization and overall to help their business grow. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Juliana who's gonna show you guys through the website. <laughs> Donde esta? Yeah, where is it? Ah, oh, there see? we are. Why are we at? So before we delve into the creation and design of the website, we'd like to further acquaint you with the organization Proyectos Tecnovo that we worked with through this lovely video, which we recreated and outlines their philosophy. Lo fundamental de la fundación es darle capacitación y trabajo a personas con discapacidad, que puede ser o discapacidad física, mental, sensorial o social, que es lo que te cuento que pues, en el primer momento no existía la discapacidad social y ya se reconoce así. Mi nombre es Claudia Gaitán de Caballero. Yo soy la fundadora, la jefe y una trabajadora más. Yo trabajo igual que todos. Lo más importante para cualquier persona con una discapacidad es poder tener su vida propia y poder salir de su casa y poder ir a trabajar y tener amigos y tener su plata y tener independencia. Para mí, poderles pagar un salario como común y corriente, como lo gana cualquier persona que gana un salario mínimo en Colombia, es muy importante, es la base mejor. Ese salario tiene que ser un salario que es el salario que fija el gobierno con todas las prestaciones sociales, con salud, con pensión, con todo como cualquier otra persona. 
hay una ley aquí un poco injusta, que es que si tú tienes personas con discapacidad contratadas, podrías pagarles el 70%, pero pues eso es absurdo, porque son las personas que más lo necesitan. Pero en Colombia parece ser que la única fundación que contrata pagando, enseñando y pagando a personas con discapacidad que no. Es un absurdo. ¿Qué es discapacidad? Si todos tenemos algún, alguna discapacidad, con seguridad. So we wanted to create a website that matched the passion of the people behind the organization and the vibrance of their products that they make. At the same time, it was also important to maintain a polished and professional feel for the site. So when it comes to the logo, for example, our graphic designer created more than 15 iterations, which through many meetings with our client and each other were refined to three, and then finally the one that you see up here today. Um, because our client is located in Latin America, obviously, and the site will be viewed by mainly Spanish speakers, it can be viewed in both English and Spanish, Español de Colombia to be exact. Um, and additionally, our client prioritized the mobile first layout. So this the site is highly responsive and the mobile version is easily navigated. Now, one of the primary objectives that Technovo and our web developer had for the website was a balanced focus on both their mission of social entrepreneurship and inclusion of people with disabilities and also their high quality handcrafted products. Thus, the organization of our website aims to balance those two aspects. Um, first, our homepage provides a glimpse of the organization as a whole. So as you scroll, you can learn the basics about different sides of the organization, and the user can choose to read more and go to the full page dedicated to that topic. The navigation bar is also organized with a balanced focus. It has two drop-down menus, one for the about, which highlights the organization's mission, story, process, and people, and the other, which is dedicated to the collections and the organization's uh, product lines. Now, we had the challenge of encapsulating the ever-expanding product line of a small business. Our client initially wanted an e-commerce website, but given the scope and our time frame with this fly-in project, that was a little out of reach. So instead, we found the happy medium that you see here today. This provides their story, but it also highlights their products so that they can be communicate with prospective retailers, distributors, and clients in the future. Now, because this site was built on WordPress, it's easy to use, and Technova will be able to maintain the website and could even expand into an e-commerce website in the future if they choose to. Now, the Connect page provides um, prospective clients and interested parties with multiple outlets to reach out to Technovo. They can visit it in person through our Google Map API. They can link to social media, a form down here to contact Technovo if you so choose, and of course, the old-fashioned way with a phone number and an email. Now, we wanted the mission page get there, uh, to provide data and statistics regarding the climate around people with disabilities in Colombia, just to further emphasize the importance of Technovo's philosophy. So we chose to incorporate animated infographics to provide variety in the display of information. Now, to accompany a video we made about the process and capabilities of Technovo, we created the process page that gives prospective clients a glimpse into how each product is made from start to finish. So it all begins with brainstorming down into trial and error, creation, decoration, and of course, distribution where it makes its way onto the shelves and into people's homes. And lastly, we were very, very passionate and adamant about giving the people working at Technovo the opportunity to speak about their own personal experiences living with a disability in Colombia. It's extremely important for people with disabilities to have the platform to share their own stories rather than just having someone else tell it for them. So the last video we're gonna leave you with is about the people who work for Technovo from the people who work for Technovo. Tecno significa una oportunidad. Fuerza. Se siente uno y orgulloso de los productos que elabora. Esperanza. Lo apoyan a uno. Creación. Trabajo. Amor. 
de mucha ayuda para todos. Proyecto Tenemos es una ayuda que le da uno a todos los incapacitados, desde sea ejército o paramilitares. Lo primero que le digo es una oportunidad para gente ¿sí? discapacitada sobre todo. Bueno, a mí me gusta lo que le digo, la, la creación de cosas, lo que se puede hacer, lo que se puede inventar, cualquier cosa que se tenga en mente, ¿sí? se puede realizar. Ha sido una forma eh, honesta de uno ganarse la vida, de, de conocer, de como capacitarse uno en, en realizar una labor, una, un arte. Para mí es una manera como de ayudar a aquellas personas que piensan que no lo pueden, pero pueden más de lo que saben hacer. Es, es como el global de lo que hemos hecho en 22 años y que hemos, nos hemos forjado eh, las 14 personas que hay conmigo trabajando. Sí, en, en laboral, pues a nivel económico ha sido importante para mí, para poder... Y colaborar también a mi mamá, poder ayudar a mi mamá y, y poder, uh, poderme más, um, como dijera, eh, poderme, poder so subsistir. La pues me, me ha cambiado, pues obviamente pues que estoy trabajando, pues ayudo a mi familia. Como te digo, ya cuando quiero hacer algo, sé que estoy ganando un dinero y y ahorro para conseguir las cosas, no como antes, que había que o pedir plata o pedirle al papá. Es muy, muy satisfactorio trabajar acá. Una ayuda muy incondicional para mucha gente. Lo ha sido y, y lo seguirá siendo. Eso es lo que yo admiro de acá, de Tecno. Well, this experience has challenged all of us personally and professionally as we strive to create the best possible product for our client. As I hope you can see, hard work and collaboration, most importantly, our teamwork, which I like to say makes the dream work, played an important part to this project at all levels. In moments of frustration and celebration, we supported each other to create a product that we're truly proud to call our own. And now we'd like to show a fun video just about our trip and our experience. Las horas pasan como minutos entre tú y yo Buscando te encontré La fuente de la felicidad La escena que no quiero para de vivir contigo Buscando te logré Tener lo que no puedo comprar Y por tu amor estoy vivo na, 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 na. Cada día más vivo Y ahora que te tengo no te voy a dejar escapar Déjame aclararte en este momento Que no te encontrabas en ningún lugar Diferente a este Pues viniste a verte conmigo Por eso te ves radiante eh. Por eso estoy elegante eh. Disculpa, no quiero perder ni un instante contigo Por eso te Y por favor estoy vivo 
espacio a tus labios Tus manos no dejan de temblar Me voy dando cuenta mi niña bonita Que valió la pena esperar Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. We are Team Cuba. We traveled to Matanzas, Cuba to meet Jesus Alberto Maderos, a prominent local artist who has done charitable work throughout Latin America. Maderos currently runs art therapy workshops for teens with behavioral issues, children with medical issues, and elders with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Our aim for this trip was to create a means of featuring these charitable efforts and the people who benefit from them. I will now introduce you to our team. My name is Katie Jostis, and I was the project manager. This is Shay Carlson, and she was the UX and UI designer. Ben Yerby was our web developer. Joshua Gay was our videographer. Brittany Pearson was our graphic designer. Sneha Kolkarni was our photographer, as was Sandra Ferguson. We had Mitch Pittman with us as well as an advisor, and he's also an Elon alumni. And Randy Pyland was our faculty advisor. And now I will hand things off to Shay for our website. So one of the unique things that we were able to do uh, was not only be creative in coming up with a logo for this project, but also the name itself. And when it came to the naming process, we thought of a few different things, uh, but a few words kept coming up over and over again about our client and about the art and the culture that's currently going on in Cuba. Um, it's very visionary and they're thinking very forward and into the future. And the artist that we worked with was often regarded as a visionary who had a heart because he constantly was looking for ways to give back to the community. And so visionary heart is how we ended up coming up with our name. Uh, we also thought first, before we started any of the design or anything else, about our target audience. And so when it came to our target audience, even though this was based in Cuba, we realized that a lot of the audience for this website would be people that would be in North America and Europe, who had some sort of tie or interest in the art, the culture, and the history of Cuba. And as such, we made sure that our website was both in English, but also could be put in Spanish. Uh, a lot of the design for our website was drawn on the idea that we wanted to immediately immerse visitors in what was happening with this project, what was happening with this artist. And so we wanted to use an engaging video right away on the home screen, lots of imagery, and create almost kind of a storybook feel to the website. The structure of the website was also taken from the idea that much of the architecture in Cuba is very modular and very art deco. And as such, because we had creative leeway, we were able to come up with a very unique design that drew on colors from the artist's studio, colors we found around Cuba, and would immediately have the feel of the vibrant culture that we found everywhere. Uh, this also presented a few challenges for us. We weren't able to use any preset platform to create the website, and instead, our web developer had to create everything from scratch. But it allowed us to be very creative and create something different. In uh, the artist himself, when we talked about him, we wanted to create an about section that went through a few different areas. About him, about the studio that he works, and about his history. He was trained at the Art Academy in Cuba, which is the only one of its kind in Cuba. And then he had the opportunity to work abroad in Europe. Uh, he went to Paris, and he worked in Italy and Belgium. And then he was always drawn back to his own community and his own culture, and had a heart for giving back some way with art, and came back to Cuba to work on these projects. So this video we're going to show you is going to give a little insight into <laughs> Perfect. 
¿Cuál es tu nombre? ¿Cuál es tu profesión? Y por favor, descríbelo dónde lo encontramos. Ya, mi nombre es Jesús Alberto Mederos Martínez, artista plástico de la ciudad de Matanza. Y nos encontramos en el taller eh, Galería Mederos, en la calle Narváez, en la orilla del río Matanzas. Hacer arte en Cuba para mí ha sido muy importante. Incluso hasta en otros países que he estado, me lo preguntan, me dicen, Medero, eh, ¿qué te harías tú si, si, si te quedaras? No, digo, no, yo tengo que, que hacer arte en Cuba. Tengo que hacer arte en Cuba porque es donde respiro, es donde me lleno, me recargo como una pila a toda potencia. Y ya te digo, y sobre todo en Matanza, porque Matanza para mí es mi fuente inspiradora, ¿entiendes? Matanza tiene muchos ríos, de hecho en mi obra prácticamente siempre está el agua, por eso es que Cuba y sobre todo Matanza para mí es todo. Hay imágenes, murales míos en toda la ciudad. Mi obra, gracias a la vida, se conoce, se ha, se ha estado haciendo, no por hacer culto de la personalidad, pero eso es una de las cosas que he tratado siempre de hacer yo, hacer notar de que existe el arte en la ciudad de Matanza, o en La, o en la Habana, o en el mundo entero. ¿no? Pero ya te digo, yo trato de involucrar a la población en los murales, en las pinturas, que todo el mundo participe de lo que yo hago, porque no es mío, es de la gente. Yo tengo una misión en la tierra que es pintar, es pintar para todo el mundo, pero pintar para, para dar algo, ¿entiendes? Para dar mi arte, la naturaleza. Soy amante puro de la naturaleza. A las manchas. Está bien, mientras más limpio, mira qué lindo está ese. Wow, papi. Qué bueno. Mi plan ambicioso es que todo el mundo pueda hacer algo lindo por esta ciudad y que venga de aquí de este proyecto, ¿no? Y que otros colegas, que otros artistas también hagan lo mismo. Ese es el plan que tengo yo, realmente. Mi plan y el colectivo mío, porque mi colectivo cree en lo que estoy haciendo. Precisamente para eso mismo. Ese es mi plan ambicioso. De que todo el que venga a este taller aprenda para hacer algo lindo por la vida de verdad. Y ese es dejar un legado. ¿Entiendes? No solamente dejar un hijo o hijos, ¿no? Sino dejar una huella, una huella hecha mi obra, eso es lo importante, ese, esa es mi razón de ser. Cuando las voy a empezar, ¿no? 
sin duda alguna, eh, una, una idea, una vez que se instala en la mente, ya está. Lo único que hay que hacer es poner de acuerdo a la materia para que se organice y se haga realidad. Es simple. Por eso, todos vivimos en una sola casa. Todos vivimos en el planeta. Todos vivimos en una sola casa. Por eso, es importante eso. Y yo me siento con todo el mundo igual. Nadie es mejor que nadie. Todo el mundo es igual. ¿Entiendes? Within the same about section as our artist, we also decided to feature a couple other distinct parts of this project, uh, such as the place, which is both Matanzas, the city in which his studio is, and the studio itself, and how the atmosphere of his studio impacts the participants and put a lot of imagery in the site that really engages people and gives them that flavor of the vibrant Cuban culture. And the studio itself, which is this beautiful light-filled studio with the big doors that open up onto the street, is very inviting and offers this safe space for people and has really had a big impact on the community. And being able to, to feature that really gives people a flavor of this place and how special it is. We also created a timeline uh, which features the history of the artist himself and how he went through art school, his training, and then his journey into his charitable efforts and giving back to his community to give a little more insight. We also created a resources page as well. And this was just an opportunity for us to show his own website uh, where he features his art. If people want to explore that more, a blog that we created documenting our experiences in Cuba and our takeaways, as well as another project we were able to visit while we were there that combines art and agriculture and how synergistically the sustainable movements that are happening in Cuba right now are also influencing art so that they're not only feeding the body, they're also feeding the soul. The last section that we created was the mission, mission section. And this section features the projects we were able to witness while we were there And we also decided to put in a fact section where we made a small interactive infographic just to give people a little bit more info on art and therapy and how that influences people uh, struggling with different things, different disabilities, all of that. The three projects that we witnessed while we were there, uh, the first one, Reformation Through Art Therapy, is the newest project. And this project is where the artist works with children that are or young adults that are struggling with behavioral issues or fitting into society. And this is an opportunity for them to have a safe space to express and connect with other young adults and explore those things. Another project that we were able to see while we were there is the Reconnecting Through Artistry. And this is where he works with elderly that are at risk for Alzheimer's and dementia and uses art to help them feel a sense of place, feel a sense of belonging with their surroundings. And then the last area that we were able to see while we were there is healing through creative expression. And with this project, uh, this is one that was one of his earlier ones he started uh, because he has a big connection and a heart for children. And this project works with children with terminal illnesses, medical issues, and helps them find an area of escape through art. And so we're gonna show you a quick video on this project and what these projects look like and sort of how they're run. Ahora tú y yo vamos para allí. Buenos días. Camino, nena. 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 Camino, nena.
como no. He estado en varios países, ¿no? por ejemplo, he estado en, bueno, trabajando intensamente en Chile, trabajando con Musa en la Teletón, estuve trabajando con niños con problemas. También trabajé intensamente en Ecuador. En Ecuador hice un trabajo hace un año y tanto trabajando en el Amazonas. Ha sido un trabajo intenso también con los indígenas, sobre todo con los niños. Eh, con niños que incluso no tenían hueso, tenían cartílago. Es un problema... Eh, pero bueno, la intención aquí es trabajar y, y tiene que ser noble. No puede haber lástima. Mira, Mari. Dale, píntate. Ponga ahí el dedito. Suave. Ahí. Ya. Ahora ponga el dedito aquí. Mi hijo se llama Dashe Baba Hernández Rodríguez y tiene 8 años. Es una parálisis cerebral infantil producida por una hipoxia eh, durante el parto. Eh, convulsionó mucho cuando nació, lo que hizo que la lesión fuera eh, el peor. Y ya de, se, se quedó ¿no? con discapacidad, tanto motora como en el aprendizaje. Él puede ayudarle mucho en su vida, eh, tanto inmediata como futura, porque se relaciona, aprende algo de arte, de manualidades, de pintura. Puede aprender muchas cosas porque él es un niño que no tiene mucha relación en la casa con otros niños y aquí hay muchísimos niños que lo ayudan mucho a su desarrollo motor y a su aprendizaje. Thank you all so much. Thank We've you. really enjoyed sharing our experience with you. We've been Team Cuba. Hello, everyone. My name is Claudia Jensen, and I am the project manager for Team Dominica. Before we begin, I would like to introduce my fellow team members. Here we have Ellington Hayes, our marketing manager, who will be presenting with me today. He was in charge of our team's social media account, creating graphic overlays for our client to use in future social media posts, as well as the bumpers that you will see on our videos. Next, we have Kentia Prince, our videographer. She captured all the interviews and B-roll and created the videos that you will see throughout our two sites. Next, we have John Gorman, our graphic designer. He created our awesome team logo one of the logos for our client, as well as the other graphics that you'll see throughout the websites. We have Fanique Robinson, our photographer, who captured amazing and beautiful photos that are spread throughout both of our websites, as well as assisting with the video uh, while we were on the island. Zach Henkels, our web developer, who was the mastermind beh behind creating the two sites that we made. And Tyron McMillan, our content strategist, who revised created and edited content for both websites and organizations, as well as assisted with video editing. We would also like to give a special thank you to our two advisors, Nicole Trish and Maggie Mulliken, for their support throughout our journey. We were lucky enough and had the pleasure of working with two organizations and created two different sites for golden opportunities and give more hugs. Give More Hugs began in 2011 by Chris McGilvery while he was living on Dominica with his wife. She was, at the time, uh, studying at the Ross University School of Medicine. Dominica is a small island located in the West Indies, just north of Martinique, and it is also known as Nature's Island. While on Dominica, Chris and his wife met with many people from around the world who shared the rich and beautiful Dominican culture with them. 
Through these encounters, they realized that they had taken a lot for granted in their life, and including the opportunity to gain an education that helps them pursue their goals and dreams. As a full-time teacher, Chris was inspired to start Give More Hugs to help support the underprivileged children of Dominica reach their potential. Since the start, the organization has expanded now to the United States and is based in Texas. Each year, they impact over 12,000 students' lives in Texas, New York, Connecticut, Dominica, and more locations. Give More Hugs has three main programs, Hugs Ambassador, Hugs Bookshare, and Hugs Backpack. These three programs help supply schools with basic school supplies like backpacks, books, art supplies, and they even provide words of encouragement to students who need it to reach their fullest potential. <clears throat> they also work with older students to help get them involved in their own communities and own schools through these three programs. As our client had an existing website, during our pre-production, we really wanted to see what they wanted to get out of their website. We found that they wanted to expand their marketing and expand their outreach to get, bring in more donors, more volunteers, and more community partners. So from this, we decided that we wanted to create an inviting and engaging website with an effective content strategy, a clear call to action, and a way for people to see the work that Give More Hugs has completed. To do so, we created a highly visual site with videos, photos, graphics, as well as clickable links and buttons. Additionally, it was really important for our client to be able to edit their site in the future, and so we chose WordPress as our platform. So with all of these goals created, we started to create the site that you see now. We worked really closely with our client, Chris, as well as their board members going through multiple review periods to make sure our videos, content, and website layout was the best that it could be, and this is what we came up with. We chose photos that expressed the mission of Give More Hugs and also showed the different programs that they have. We created graphics that showed the importance of the work done by Give More Hugs, as well as creating seven videos that are spread throughout the site for the organization to show, and they really capture the essence of the organization. We would now like to show the mission video that is shown on the home page, which we hope will inform and inspire donors and volunteers to get on board and take action with Give More Hugs. <laughs> The education is number one, and it should be number one in everyone's life. You have a better education, you have a better life. Here in Dominica, the biggest challenges that a student would face would be limited resources, whereas some children would come to school with a snack or with a books and pencils, and that is a constant thing, so that is one of the biggest challenges, the resources. Chris started this program, Give More Hugs, in Dominica because he wanted to give back to his community and the underprivileged children that are here. And since then, it's um, gone to develop internationally in America and continues to grow on. The Student Ambassador Program bridges the gap between the mother foundation and smaller foundations that are in smaller, com smaller countries like Dominica. I collect school supplies, I raise funds, I do book drives, I host events, and we donate them to schools and to underprivileged students in different communities. The Bookshare program is also a fantastic program. Each one has a handwritten note from the student that donates it to them. When you bring them back to the schools, to the students that are in need, and they're able to read who this gift is from, it gives it so much more of just a personal touch to it. The backpack program, I should say, is one where you can only donate a, a, a new backpack, fill that backpack with school supplies, and then you find someone to donate it to. Give more hugs. Day is not just about giving hugs to people. <laughs> They ensure that the lives of children and the children are well taken care of. The Give More Hugs Foundation has been really impactful on the Dominican community and the, the, the society at large because 
When you think of, of students who don't have the necessary resources that they need to succeed at school, the Give Mohawks Foundation, in collaboration with the Golden Opportunities Foundation, makes it a bit easier. And I think people should support nonprofit organizations a little bit more. Donate something. If you're not using something, it will reach a long way if you just decide to give it to somebody. So I would say thank you to the Give Mohawks Foundation. Thank you for partnering with the Golden Opportunities Foundation and thank you for being a part of the Dominican community. So another thing that was really important was the marketing and outreach. So we wanted to make sure that when people come to the site, they can see where they need to go to donate and get involved. So we revamped their donate page, and we now have options for people to donate to the specific programs, the option to donate to the organization as a whole, as well as the ability to see what their donation can do and how their donation can impact students' lives. So we hope with this newly renovated donation page that donors and partners will like to come to this organization to support the Give More Hugs mission and get on board with Give More Hugs. And now I would like to pass it along to Ellington. Thank you. As Claudia stated before, we, um, along with working with Give More Hugs, we were able to work with and collaborate with one of the hug ambassadors right there on the island. Lakia Joseph was born and raised in Dominica, and she wasn't afforded the same opportunities and resources as others. With sheer willpower and a thirst for learning, she was able to define all odds and become one of the brightest students on, in Dominica. In 2017, she was named Dominica's youth champion and ambassador for women empowerment and gender equality. And she received the Queen's Young Leader Award in 2018. Lakia wanted to encourage students of Dominica to have the same passion for learning that she did, as she believes that education is the golden opportunity to life hence the name of her organization. At just 19, she began collecting books, school supplies, clothes, and hygiene products to give out to students and families in need. Golden Opportunity's mission is to empower, educate, support the underprivileged youth of Dominica by, supporting, by supplying the necessary tools they need to become positive, vibrant, successful people and Dominica. Unlike Give More Hugs, um, Golden Opportunities is a new organization, so they need a brand, a website, and they didn't have much of a digital presence. Lakia wanted Golden Opportunities to have a new brand and logo design, as well as an easy to navigate website for people to learn more about her organization. As a team, we wanted to create an appealing website and an interesting and appealing brand to entice future donors and volunteers to help the organization. We started with the logo design as we wanted to establish an overall brand. So Lakia gave us this drawing that her uncle made that she felt represented the purpose, of un the purpose of unity and inclusion of her organization. Our graphic designer was able to interpret that drawing into this logo. The gold represents one of the colors in the flag as well as the prestige of education. From there, we were able to create marketing materials as well as the organization's website. Here we have the homepage that showcases the overall mission and purpose of the organization. We would like to show a video that showcases the organization and its mission. When you talk about the golden opportunity, education is the golden opportunity. And once you get that opportunity, everything will come into play for you. So that's the golden opportunity. The Golden Opportunities Foundation has always been to support the young persons of our country. And from the start, what we basically do is seek donors and seek funds, raise money to buy school supplies, collect clothes, books, shoes, and then when we do that, or when we get the donors to do that, then we select or we reach out to a community or a school or a certain family and we donate those supplies to them. And then we provide training because some students, not every child is school savvy or not every child 
has that ability to be successful at school. So the main goal of the Golden Opportunities Foundation, by saying all that, is to ensure that no student feels alone in their education and to ensure that all students receive an education. They get the opportunity to obtain an education and they have what they need to be successful and to be motivated and to be inspiring young person. I realize that even if you are faced with a certain situation or circumstance, that doesn't mean you cannot do something to make a change. Along with the home page, we have the founders page, which tells Lakia's story and her journey on creating golden opportunities. After that, we have the get involved page that shows how people can donate and volunteer with the organization. With this site, we hope Lakia can grow the Golden Opportunities brand, as well as touch more lives in Dominica and around the world. In closing, our team had the pleasure of working with two wonderful organizations, and we were able to create two responsive and mobile-friendly websites. We would like to thank Chris and give more hugs, as well as, Lisa, as well as Lakia and Golden Opportunities. We also would like to thank <coughs> Dominica and the people there. It was truly a life-changing experience, and we wouldn't trade it for the world. To learn more about these organizations, please go to givemorehugs.org and thegoldenopportunities.com. We'll be handing out business cards at the end of the program as you leave. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julia Brown, and I was the project manager for Team Ecuador 2019. I would like to start off by introducing our wonderful team. So first up, we have Emily Morin, who is our web designer. Next, we have Devon James, who is our information architect. Danita Sharkey, who is a videographer. Jeremy Mack, who is our graphic designer. Simone Young, who is also our videographer. Matt Wotus, who is our photographer. Lucia Jervis, who is not in the iMedia program, but she came along with us as our translator. And our amazing advi advisors, David Copeland and Tara Holland. So our project is pretty unique because unlike most fly-in projects, we didn't go to help an organization. Rather, we went to help three individuals, Michelle Grunauer, Kaylee Mikesell, and Diego Enwes, who created this app called MedPal CNN. So MedPal CNN is an educational mobile app designed with the goal to implement pediatric palliative care worldwide. It was our privilege to create a website about MedPal CNN that not only explains the features of the app, but also what palliative care and pediatric palliative care is. So since the app will be used worldwide, we wanted to keep it very simple, easy to use, and non-country specific. Ecuadorian people, like many people all over the world, rely heavily on the use of their mobile devices to get all of their information. So knowing that influenced our concise and straightforward ap approach that we took in designing the site. In addition, the simplistic design of MedPal CNN allows it to load quickly in any setting. And that's also why the creators of the app made sure that once it's downloaded onto a mobile device, you don't need Wi-Fi to access any of the information. All the information on the app is very critical, so the creators wanted little to no barriers for people to get this information. That's another reason that we focused on making our site very video heavy, so we could prevent the barrier of illiteracy. So while we were on our trip, we conducted 15 interviews, nine of which were in both Spanish and English. Our video team, Danita Sharkey and Simone Young, spent countless hours editing clips to make awesome videos about what palliative care is and about the MedPal CNN app. These videos will allow people who cannot necessarily read to still get the information that they need about the app. During the process of our project, Jeremy Mack was tasked with making some amazing designs, and one of which was completely changing the logo. He did an amazing job with this logo, incorporating a lot of symbolism and cultural aspects that express the true meaning of MedPal CNN and its home in Ecuador. We also created a three-month social media plan for Michelle and her team. We created an Instagram, a Facebook, a Twitter, a YouTube channel, and a Google Calendar that houses dates and times when they should post each week of the campaign. Matt Wotus, Devon James, and myself made three to four posts for each week of the campaign and added them to the calendar. 
to make it as convenient as possible for them to promote their app through their social media accounts after we're gone. Devon also created And the Alpaca, which you see on the screen, to bring a fun presence to our social media campaign. So the first time we were given a phone to actually look at the app was when we touched down in Ecuador. We found that certain elements of it were very hard to use and hard to navigate through. So we decided to conduct some usability testing on the app. Our XUI expert, Devon James, created three different personas that we presented to Michelle to help her understand the perspective with which we were looking at the app. We have continued to do this testing throughout our process of developing the site, and we continue to send feedback to her to make the app as best as it can be. Devon also created this awesome infographic to help people learn about palliative care. So as our site is being pulled up, I'd like to ask you guys a few questions. So please raise your hand if you've ever been to the doctor. <laughs> okay. Please raise your hand if you've ever been to the hospital either for yourself or for a loved one. Okay. So as I can see, pretty much everybody in here raised your hands, which means you've seen the use of palliative care or the lack of palliative care. So palliative care is the mental, emotional, spiritual, and holistic care of the patient and their loved ones. Most people think that palliative care is just involved in end-of-life care, but that's a myth. Palliative care should be implemented in every stage of life, even pediatrics. Pediatric palliative care has been around for less than 20 years, and because it is such a new concept, it's not implemented worldwide. MedPal CNN was created to change this by educating everyone from doctors to parents and by giving tools for parents and caretakers of the children to give the children the best quality of life they can possibly have. While on our trip, we worked hand in hand with Michelle Grunauer, who often said that palliative care was not about the quantity of life, but rather the quality. MedPal CNN was created to allow some level of this care possible in the rural areas where people have little to no access to hospitals or healthcare centers. So now we would like to play a short video about changing the way we think about palliative care. A very important part of the care that I give to patients is palliative care. Uh, it's like uh, treating a uh, broken bone uh, using a cast but not taking care of uh, the pain it, 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 you know, the breaking of the bone produces. So palliative care is an integral part of uh, taking care in a comprehensive way of our patients. These were very good doctors that they knew the moment to start treatment. They weren't aware of the moment in which they needed to change treatment and focus on quality of life for the baby and for the parents. But what about the family? What about uh, their worries, their concerns, and, uh, and that has to be addressed, has to be addressed. And if the child does not recover fully and becomes a chronic patient with uh, chronic neurological problems and disabilities, uh, it's something that we as the doctors have to be able to address as well. Have, we have to know about all these things. We have to be able to, to not only address them, but also treat them. It's part of the treatment. It's like, again, uh, not just putting a cast on a broken bone, but also taking care of the pain that it causes. Having people that are competent in palliative care makes that those hard news can be processed and, and then hope can be redirected. Also the difficult decision making, if it comes to a moment in which uh, very, very difficult decisions need to be made in thinking about the best interests of the child and the family, it might be very hard to take that decisions by ourselves, being parents. So knowing that there is a team that is supporting us, uh, supporting the parents, that is very, very important. So the app was created with a grant of $15,000 that took over two years to make. Many good people have given contributions to the app 
knowing that rather than a monetary compensation, the only compensation that they would get would be helping children around the world. Doctors in South Africa and England who contributed content or ideas to help the app sparked the idea to make the app bilingual. The English version is targeted to people in South America, England, South Africa, I'm sorry, England and North America, while the Spanish version is targeted to people in South America, Latin America and other Spanish speaking countries. The insight that these doctors from other countries gave about pediatric palliative care in their countries truly benefited the wealth of the information on the app. So as you can see, palliative care is extremely important to healthcare. And though this amazing app was created to spread the practices of pediatric palliative care around the world, the team who built the app had no way of letting anyone know the app exists. So enter Team Ecuador. That's what we were here for. So without further ado, we'd like to take you through our website. So first and foremost, the site is meant to showcase the MedPal CNN app. So the home page is full of screenshots to help visually explain the app. For the sake of reaching our audience in rural areas, we only included the necessary photos to the site so that it will load as fast as possible. The site is in both Spanish and English. So at the top of the page, we used two phones so that to visually express that it's a bilingual site. The care guidelines and tools are the two main sections of the app. So we wanted to add screenshots of those to make sure that people knew how to navigate them. We chose, Word, we chose WordPress as our platform to make it very easy for Michelle and her team to update the site as they provide future updates to the app. The About page is intended to explain the purpose of the app, where all of the content comes from, and who created the app. Since the app includes all medical information, it's very important that people know the origin of the information is both legitimate and factual. The creators of the app took every measure possible to make sure that the information is of the highest quality and up to the standards of the World Health Organization. The What is Palliative Care page is all about palliative care and more specifically pediatric palliative care. This page includes myths and facts and information about the worldwide need for pediatric palliative care. Pedro's story is about a child who is very close to Michelle's heart. We wanted to dedicate this page to Pedro and his family to help bring awareness to what pediatric palliative care actually looks like. Pedro's parents were kind enough to open up their home and allow us to do an interview with them about their life with Pedro and his condition. The support page is an area where people can donate to the app, which will contribute to future updates of the app and allow the app to stay free of cost for anyone who wants to download it which was a very important thing that Michelle wants to make sure that is always free. We also added information about two NGOs whose founders came to do interviews with us. Fundacion Triada is a center for all types of rehabilitation, whether it is mental or a physical need. Fundacion El Triangulo is an educational center for people with intellectual disabilities. This center teaches people of all ages and life, teaches people of all ages life skills so that they can go out and function in society just like people who don't have their disabilities. The final nonprofit on the page is the Fundacion Azulado, an Ecuadorian non for profit organization that was co founded by Michelle Grunar. The object objectives of that nonprofit is to prevent child maltreatment and sexual abuse through educational programs directed towards parents, teachers, and children. As we said, the mobile version of the site is extremely crucial. So this is what it will look like on a mobile phone. Another feature of the site is the button at the bottom of the screen that allows people to change the language from Spanish to English or vice versa with ease. We want to make sure that it's very easy to navigate on a mobile phone. As I said, most people will be looking at it on their cellular device. And Emily Morin did a great job designing the site just for that. For the last part of our project, Devon James and Matt Wotus worked together to create a website all about our trip. The site informs people about what iMedia fly-ins are, what we did for our project, who our amazing team consists of, and at the bottom, there's an interactive map of everywhere that we went, and every place we went has Andy the Alpaca on the spot. <laughs> 
Um, so now we would like to share this video that our videography team made of our trip.
So finally, I would just like to give a special thanks to Michelle Grunauer for making our trip to Ecuador beyond anything like regular fly-ins. We were lucky enough to be escorted by her daughter, Lucia, to experience the true culture of the beautiful country of Ecuador. Thank you for an unforgettable experience, and thank you for allowing us to work on this groundbreaking app with you. That is our presentation. Thank you.